what, what episode it is, but we are on a timer. Oh, no. Let's get this thing over with. Okay. <laughs> and we are live. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 34 of the Hot Stove Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Nunez, and I'm here with two of my co-hosts. It's me, Josh. And Austin, of course. No Mark Trash. No Mark Trash. He's at work. We were supposed to have a special military guest today. Um, he bla- he bailed on us. So we told him uh, 0800. Or no, we, yeah, no, 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 no. We told him. 12, we told we told eight. him 2000. Oh yeah, yeah. We told him two 2100. How they say it in the military? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't get shot in the head. Anyways, uh, um. Uh, what are we going to do today? I forgot what we're going to do today. Um, sure. I guess we'll do a little bit of look forward uh, towards the MLB trade deadline this Friday, Saturday. I don't remember what day it is. One of these days. Um, it's coming. And then also uh, the start of NBA free agency is upon us. Uh, that starts on right. Friday, I believe. The NBA draft is on Thursday. So That's we'll look true. ahead to some of the bigger storylines headed into this weekend in the National Basketball Association, which will, uh, as always, prove to be more dramatic than it has any right being, um, which is what I love about the sport. So, uh, we yes. woo, we woo. Uh, Xavier Howard has just officially requested a trade from the Dolphins. Put out a big old thing about it. Shefty tweeted. It's a strange situa- situation. I Quote, agree. until that trade happens, I'm just here so I don't get fined and will handle myself <laughs> like professionals do. <laughs> so, like, he seems cordial about it, but he, he's he going to play. He just doesn't want to be there anymore, is what it sounds yeah. like. Which basically makes it a nothing burger because then they have no incentive to, to, to trade him. Yeah, he's going to yeah, just, just be play. like, we're looking at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's such a weird situation, too, because he just signed a contract extension, what, a year and a half ago? Uh, yeah, and they got a lot better. Since then, it got a lot better and saw Byron Jones come in and get paid more than him to be a worse player. So, (sighs) yeah, that's a bummer. It's it's a strange, strange situation, unlike any any kind of situation like that that we've seen in recent years. So I guess we'll be following it as it develops. But as it stands right now, I assume Xavier Howard's going to play begrudgingly, uh, maybe, but (laughs) assume he'll be on the field. Um, So. A couple of things, a couple of housekeeping things, actually, since it's been a couple of weeks. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, at Hot Stove Pod. That's at Hot Stove Pod on Twitter. And then here on the YouTube side, make sure to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment if you feel like commenting. And um, what was the other one? Turn on the notification button. Smash the notification Smash. button after you subscribe so you know when we post new videos, even though we're very predictable about it. A um, couple things about the show moving forward. We are getting closer to the NFL season, so we will have some some more steady content coming out soon. Um, and then we'll probably also be mixing in some After Dark episodes because our, our regular weekly episodes tend to be pretty full during the NFL season. So um, look for more content coming out soon from us, so just generally speaking. I, I uh, you know, taking less weeks off, Probably taking no weeks off because, you know, you can't possibly do that. Um, and doing more content and stuff like that. For the month of August, what we're going to be doing is, um, you know, this is cribbed a little bit from uh, everyone's favorite NFL podcast, The Mina Kimes Show. But uh, basically, she spends the entire summer uh, doing divisional previews. We're going to condense it into a month because I don't think that we can fill an hour plus uh, worth of material on a division an episode because we're bad. So um, we're going to be doing uh, what I'm going to call our hot stove directional previews. So every week um, during the month of August, we'll be talking about uh, the north, south, east, or west, and both of the divisions in either league or either conference um, that make up that. So that'll be our month of August, and it'll go right into our NFL season preview before the season starts. So um from here, we're making the full swing into football-related content. It doesn't seem like it's around the corner, but NFL, uh, I mean, the preseason starts in like a week and a half. So um, it's an exciting time to be a be a sports fan. But uh, before we get into our content for today, we have a lot of trivia. 
Uh, it's been a couple weeks since we've done a show, and um, I've been on a roll in getting trivia from places recently. So uh, this is, offers an opportunity for Mark and, uh, or not Mark, Josh and Austin to catch up a little bit. Um, an update on the standings here that uh, we are about the end of July, so we're almost seven months into 2021, and Mark has uh, 151 points. He's in first place. Mm-hmm. Um, Josh is in second with 100, with 100 flat, uh, and then nice. Austin has 92 points in third place. Um, Which, I got one question. You want me to rock that first to kick it off or save your, like, you got good ones, I take it? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. If you got a trivia question, go for it. Great. Mine's kind of dated because, again, you would have, but it's, uh, I got it during the Open Championship, and they gave out this stat. And so, in golf's entirety of the four major systems, there's been 457 major winners winning, like, events, right? Major events won. The, yeah. Are you talking about unique major winners? Nope, just... that's where I'm, that's the okay. question. Yeah, how many of those have been individual, like, how many actual individuals have won it? If 457, yeah, so including those get the question um 208 wait wait wait. austin and i will each take a guess and we'll do prices yeah. right ones. yes okay. closest without going okay. over correct yes all right all right all right 200 so again, total number of, yes is my answer 286 one okay. one <laughs> well, bitch <laughs> I went with the other side. It was either I thought you were you were high or you were low. <laughs> okay. Well, um, well uh, Austin, <laughs> congrats. It was 226 <laughs> is the answer. Yeah, there's a lot. But I think it's because a lot of people just get doubled up at least. You know, there's very rarely just somebody who just won one. So. Yeah, that's why I was trying. To, that's why I was trying to go a little lower, but I didn't. I didn't expect yeah. it to be that. So, I mean, hell, between just Tiger and Jack by itself, you got thirty between two people yeah. for more than thirty. Yeah. So that limits it. But yeah, that's uh, that that was fun. Okay, congrats. Goes on to the real ones. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I have uh, all of my questions are baseball questions. I have six trivia questions today. A total of twenty-five points up for grabs. Okay. And let's get into it. I want you to name me the two pitchers in Major League Baseball this year who have allowed 20 more, twenty or more homers but also have an ERA under four. Sure, sir. Incorrect. Gibson. Also incorrect. Under four? Tigers under four. 20 home runs alone off that bump. Oh, oh true. God. Fucking Anthony Rizzo. Um, wow, what a stat. <laughs> there's one in the American League and one in the National League. Oh, there's two pitchers, right? That's the two good. pitchers. Yep. Oh, uh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Uh oh. Since those last, since um, our last, uh, since I compiled this. It is. It has become outdated. So one of the answers was going to be Kyle Hendricks, um, mm. but he might. I believe he's had two starts since I got the stat, and has gotten whapped in them. He's now up to twenty-two homers on the year, so he doesn't count. There's one pitcher. Never mind. Let me go. Let me go look up that picture to make sure. Uh, so we're looking for an AL pitcher with more than twenty home runs, and uh, under four no, ERA. He's allowed twenty-three home runs now. Okay, well... Who, who is that guy? It was Robbie Ray. Okay. Who seemingly all go. of his own on home Wait, runs. Fuck. Who? Robbie so. Gray? Robbie Ray. Robbie Ray. <laughs> oh, I was like, are you Robbie Gray? Robbie Gray? Robbie Ray, who's completely reinvented himself this year and turned himself into one of the best pitchers in the American League. Um, obviously known huge walker in the past. He's decided to, this year literally just start throwing balls down the center of the plate. I think Austin and I've had this conversation on the show before. Um, yeah, that's literally the only change he's made is just pound the strike zone and let the stuff go to work. Dude and just wants to feel something. It's worked for him. So good for Robbie Ray. So that's that's outdated. Anyways, we'll move to the next. The rest okay. of these are not outdated. I can say that for certain. Um, so we want to talk a little bit history here. 
Uh, Fernando Tatis has been pretty open about the fact that he wants to go uh, 2020 in the second half of the season. Um, that's a pretty rare feat um, to do. Done. In 20 homers, 20 steals? Yep. In fact, only four players have done it. Uh, and I want you to tell me the four players in Major League Baseball history who, have, is, had, who have gone 2020 after the All-Star break. This is a fun one to guess, Austin, because most of them that would come to mind would be classics to guess on the show. For example, my first guess would be Alfonso Soriano. That is incorrect. Even though, obviously, he would guess because he had a 40-40 season. But no, yes. he is incorrect. Okay, Most of the time when he has seasons like that, they do a lot of fun running. Yeah, do you want your first guess? Who's your first guess? Uh, Austin? That was my first guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, what about uh, Jose Reyes? Also incorrect. Carl Crawford. No. Oh, so fun. A uh, little bit of a <laughs> uh, little bit of information I learned about Carl Crawford yesterday, um, from friend of the show Mike Schrader, that apparently Carl Crawford's kid is a first round MLB draft prospect for next year. Ooh. Uh, which just makes me feel old. See you now. Oh yeah. yeah. He's a junior in high school currently. It makes you feel old. Like I, I was telling you before the show, I get when I got pulled over tonight. The guy was like, "You got kids." I got kids. Do I look like a man who should have kids? You see this baby face? What are you talking about, sir? I don't have children. Jesus. Anywho, um, uh, no. Carl Crawford is not the answer. I'll tell you, the four people who have done it are, are very well-known players. Yeah. Um, All right, we yeah. can think about this. Can we? Yeah, I mean, you just got to think about guys who steal and guys who rake. This is fine. Um, what about uh, David Wright? No. Okay. Guy never stole a base. Never healthy enough to run. Uh, <laughs> H- H- Hanley Ramirez. Also, no. That's a good guess, though. Who's the guy? Um, I'm thinking Yankees outfielder, but not while he was good. Johnny Damon. No, it's not Johnny Damon. Who's another one that they brought over from um, Boston? That Jacoby Ellsbury. No. He, I don't know. Uh, no, no. Never mind. Is that a bad one? Players that a, who could hit 20 that a bad guess? runs. Who could hit 20 home oh, runs in a half of a season? Jacob, Jacoby Ellsbury? You think he's a 40 no, home run guy? No, I don't think he is, but I'm thinking I'm thinking he no, might have had the... Not the answer. So I'll give you the years here. A-Rod. Maybe that's... A-Rod that's is incorrect. I'll give you the years. Uh, we have 1956. Um, oh, there's Mark when you need him. 1997. Uh, okay, that's easier. 2002. Okay. And 2019. Ken Griffey Jr.? No. Okay. Ralph Kiner? Also no. That's my old guess. All right. <laughs> think think uh, other legendary 50s players. Uh, I'm not that's... kidding you when I say that these are easy names to get. What did you say? Roger Maris. No, it's not Roger Maris. I mean, there's no way, dude. I don't Who'd know you say anything. That? I don't know anybody in the 1950s. Yeah, I, I'm almost going to just tank the 50s one. When was Honus Wagner playing? Was that what it been? It's not he Honus Wagner. He's well before then, right? Guy was playing at the turn of the century. He was playing uh, at the Civil War. Uh, uh, right, why am I even focusing on that one? I got to go uh, to the night. Er, er, Ernie Banks. Ernie Banks. No. Ted no. Williams. No. Ricky Henderson. No. Come on. 12 gold gloves. Two MVPs. No, not either of them. Twelve gold gloves. Nineteen seventy nine Hall of Fame inductee. Nineteen seventy nine. So it took him a while. Maybe he was a. Maybe he was an African American outfielder who played his entire career, with the exception of the last two years where he played a combined like six games, uh, for one team. Hank Aaron. 3,000 hits. No, not Hank Aaron. This guy's capping, dude. This 3,000 hits this club, huh? He, he played for this team so long that they relocated while he played for them. <laughs> oh. Jackie Robinson? No. He's a no. second baseman. He's a second baseman. Also, well before 1956. Yeah. Dude, can we focus on the 90s guys? Hall of Fame in 79? 
I'm telling yeah. you, I think it's got to be an African American player that took so long to get in the hall because they didn't, they wouldn't have voted him in. Trust me, it didn't take him very long to get into the Hall of Fame. Widely oh, regarded so maybe he, as the best baseball players of all time. Oh, that's just on me for thinking that his 56 would have been the end of his career. <laughs> if he did this, uh, it was yeah, probably right in the prime. Three. Okay, yeah. So it was the first ballot Hall of Famer. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> uh, I don't know, yeah. kid. This guy's just lying to us. There's no way. It's not true. I'm moving on. Sean Kemp? <laughs> Shit, the basketball player? No, isn't – oh, Sean Green. <laughs> Sean Green? Sean Green, the it's cover of 2004, MLB so The Show. At Sean Kemp? I, I <laughs> Sean this guy Green. trolling? I don't know, man. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't think I'm ever going to give up. I, I just can't get this 50s guy. How is, how is it even possible? So, you guys are going to kick yourselves if you, ever, if you ask me to tell you any of these players. Um. Larry Walker. No. Does, I'll let does, you know, again, the other years are 1997, 2002, and 2019, two seasons ago. Barry Larkin? No. Oh, fuck. You said, ah, God damn. Seasons ago? What? Oh, that, sorry, yeah, it looks like that would have been my guess for 2019. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Donald, Donald Acuna. Yes, Ronald Acuna went 21 and 24 in the second half of 2019. Jeff Bagwell. One of them. No, it's not Jeff Bagwell. <laughs> no, what's 97? What's fucking 97? I mean, you gotta be, you gotta be kidding me. Dude, Mark is gonna pull one of these guys. Mark is gonna get it. Is it Barry Bonds? Yes, Barry Bonds. <laughs> oh, I was trying too hard to go it, deep in the 97. 97. Mark gets the point for that, by the way. None Mark. of you get the claim that. I just saw that. Mark. Mark just got a point from a group chat. Josh <laughs> asked in the group chat, and he said Barry Bonds. <laughs> no, I, I was almost there. You know, I was trying. I, it was too obvious. You know, Juan Pierre. No, not Juan Pierre. <laughs> Dude, guy had like 40 <laughs> steals, probably. All right, all right, all right. Recalibrate here. 1956 no, and 2002. 2002. Yeah, I mean, let's see. Let's see if Mark... Mark <laughs> will pull the rest. Years here. <laughs> let's see if Mark can get him. So what does Mark say? <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Very no. again. What did he say? Willie Mays? Willie Mays is correct. <laughs> you guys are idiots. Willie Mays? You couldn't no. think of that for 900 people? <sighs> I guess Mark, that one, Mark. <laughs> Mark. Mark also guessed Soriano. I, I guess not that. Not Alfonso Soriano. I want to recount. Can we, get a, can we get a dial in on 2002? Do we got a, like a, a hint uh, for this guy? Or is he just a stud that we should know? He is a Hall of Famer. Okay. <laughs> Let me see what team he played for at the time. Yeah, Barry Bonds, Willie Mays, and Ronald Acuna. We got pretty, pretty elite class here so far. Yeah, he played um, in the National League at the time. Has ties to today's game. So he's got a kid. What? Dude, no shot. This dude stole uh, 20. Now nah, he, he didn't even play then. Vlad Guerrero? What? Yeah, he absolutely played then, and Vlad Did Guerrero he? Junior or Vlad Guerrero Senior is the answer to the question. Whoa! Wow. Guy didn't. He said, "No way, this guy played then." He was drafted and he made his debut in '96. He stole 40 oh. bases that year. Um, Old man had wheels. And all. Oh, well, he was 27. Old man. <laughs> but no. also, want to hear a fun fact? He stole 40 bases, uh, and his stolen base percentage was two thirds. He got caught stealing 20 times that year. <laughs> and then he just kept telling. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah. Okay, Watch so that's it. The four players who have gone 2020 after the All-Star break are Barry Bonds, Ronald Acuna, Willie Mays, and Vladimir Guerrero Sr. Really not difficult names. I'm mad at you that it took that long. Eh, uh, you know, debatable. Let's move on. All right. 
<sighs> Let me see if I can get one that you guys are actually going to know. Okay, so there okay. are... The, <laughs> there are... Um, Hands up, by the way. I'm not cheating. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. There are uh, two players... Mark's not going to be able to help you with these ones. There are <laughs> two players currently in Major League Baseball who have both a 300 XBA and a 600 X slug this season. What is XBA? Expected batting Those average? Those are expected stats based on quality of contact. So expected so, batting average, expected slugging percentage, 300 and 600. There are only two players who hit both gross. of those marks this season. Uh, they play, I'll give you a hint right off the bat. They play in the same division. Jesse Winker? Yeah. Castellanos? Yeah. <laughs> I would have guessed one of them. I mean, they both have like a 320 race or – Batting average still. Hmm. All right. Who's doing pretty well hitting the ball, huh? Um. <laughs> I'll tell maybe. you one of them. One of them, according to their expected numbers, is overperforming their numbers, and one of them is underperforming the numbers by a little bit. Um, okay. Michael Brantley. No. Uh. Uh. uh Brandon Crawford. No. See you, I guess. Uh, by the way, speaking of the Giants, uh, Evan Longoria is very close to this. Uh, his his X slug is well over six hundred, but his XBA is like two eighty something. Okay. Um, is it Devers and Guerrero? Uh, Vlad Guerrero is one of them. Uh, Rafael Devers is not. Bogarts? No. Um, Vlad Guerrero, by the way, is the one that's ever so slightly yeah. overperforming his numbers. Okay. I mean, that's kind of a given, but yeah. Is it your Bowens under- then? That is not Cedric Mullins. I think he would be overperforming as well, right? I'd expect it to be. Is he, he, probably, is he batting like 330 right now? Yeah, I, I don't know. Be I a little know. higher than that. <laughs> that should be a little higher than Cedric Mullins is getting. I mean, I just, um, I don't know. Maybe uh, Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is the correct answer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right, that one. Okay. That that Judge only I only watch. threw out like six names. That's fine. Yeah. Aaron Judge is the one that is. <laughs> Underperforming is number one. Uh, two players with a 300 XBA and X, uh, 600 X slug this year, Vlad Guerrero Jr. and Aaron Judge. All right. Uh, we'll move on to another one here. Uh, let's. How about this? Since mm-hmm. the start of July, mm-hmm. the last 26 days, obviously not counting today's numbers. Sure. There are 10 players with at least seven home runs. And I want you to tell me those 10 players. Ten players with seven home runs since In July. July. Uh, Juan He's Soto. Up. Juan Soto is not. Oh yeah, he is. He has eight. Sorry. That's a good guess. Um, who's heating up? Who's heating up? Um. Oh, he went on a run. Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo only has six, I believe. Ah, I feel like he went on a run before the. Uh, All Star break, right? That was a yeah, good it thing was to mostly land. No. Ah, fudge. Um, okay. Um, who's hitting dingers? Who's hitting dingers? I'll tell you this with the exception of two of them, um, three of them. So there's nine players left. Yep. Two of them are in the National League, th- uh, seven of them are in the American League. Matt Olson. Matt Olson is correct. Okay. Guy's feeling himself. Um, who's that guy? Um, the outfielder on the Rays. Uh, Margot. Manuel Margot is incorrect. That's a pull. Okay. That's that's an interesting okay. pull. Okay. Is he not a home run hitter? Not really, but I saw him I mean, in a stat today with Juan Soto and Joey Gallo. So I was just thinking it was nothing to do with that. It was defensive stat, but I was just pulling it back. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess I'll throw it out there. Otani. Otani has seven in July. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Vlad. Uh, no, that's incorrect. Mitch Haniger. Mitch Haniger also has seven. In Jesus July. Christ! He's following Dinger. Where's his hands? I don't see his hands. Maybe she. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm, 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 around my cock. <laughs> Whoa! Jesus. Yeah, five uh, remaining. Naming the best players in the league right now. 
Do you have? Is there still two to go in the National League? I don't know where these guys play. Yes, still two okay. to go in the National League. Um, man. Arenado. He's got twenty something. Incorrect. Mm. What about um? Um, who's scoring out there in the National League? You know, who who would be putting up some numbers here? The G men are no good. The Dodgers. The Dodgers. Oh, really so you already said Otani, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Uh, Salvi. Uh, no. And I told you there were five left, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, five left. Two from the National League. Three from the American League. Um, Anthony Rizzo. No, he's been terrible since April. <laughs> he had a home run tonight. tonight. That's why I said. Oh, he did? <laughs> yeah, jackass. Uh, one of these guys <laughs> hit their seventh yesterday. I can't remember who it was. No, That's it might have oh, been. Man, it, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. Who oh, it was. Chris Taylor, Dodgers. Uh, uh no, surprisingly. Wow, he hasn't. Did he? He went nuts this uh, month. One of his teammates has hit seven though. Max no. Muncy? No. I knew he was stinky poo poo. His teammates stink. Well, Known okay. underrated player, teammate of Chris Taylor, has hit seven home runs in the month of July. Kiki Hernandez? Kiki Hernandez, Hernandez doesn't play for the Dodgers anymore. Oh, he's and, a fucking Red Sox. And no, Justin Turner is, the, is not correct. He's an underrated Dodger. Or at least I think he he's kind of underrated. In the same, almost in the same way that Chris Taylor's underrated. Yeah, I don't know who the hell Chris Taylor is. He's a very underrated player. <laughs> uh, I'm basically Will Smith, yeah. the catcher. Uh, no. <laughs> what are we talking about? I have no clue. This isn't even for those one. I'm going through my fantasy team just to find players. Oh, this guy might be. How about uh, about Austin Riley? Incorrect. He's had three in the last four days. <laughs> had did, three he, in the, did he yeah. hit one? Today? He hit one yesterday. Oh, and yes. tonight. Yeah, he hit one tonight. Okay, so that one tonight might give him seven. I really don't know. Oh, like I, I said, see. these are as of yesterday's numbers. I got nothing. Um, uh, McCutcheon. Uh, no, you guessed that. Damn, he's been very hot this month. Has he? Yeah. That's that walk off dead. like two nights ago. He did. Off of uh, Brad Hand, who sucks. Jesus. <clears throat> um. Okay. Okay. Oh, there's always. Oh, you got to know your audience. There's always a bum Marlin in here. <laughs> there aren't any Marlins. <laughs> no Marlins. Bum Marlins. Dude, what am I missing here? I feel like I'm missing a key ingredient. You're missing a couple of key you're missing ingredients. Missing a Dodger. Yep, uh, you're underrated a Dodgers. Dodger. You're missing a Dodger. You're missing a NL East first baseman. You're missing an American League third baseman. Wait, Pete Alonso? Pete, Al- yeah, wait, wait, Pete wait. Alonso has nine in July. Woo! <laughs> How the f- did we miss Pete Alonso <laughs> in the Derby? And he's he hit like three against the Reds in the series they had. Yeah, really oh. yeah, Pete Alonso. All right, okay. so what we're missing here is an American League third baseman, a Dodger player, a American League catcher, and an American League outfielder. <sighs> catcher not named Salvador Perez. That's, That's right. Implausible. Is it? He's in the same division as Salvador Perez. No. I refuse to accept that. Some would um, say an American League Central catcher. I I don't. First off, I'm having trouble. I know. I know the team now. I and forgot the about the one. Sir, the outfielder also plays in the American League Central. Bob Badu? No, it's not a kill Badu. Bob Badu? 
No, no well, I, sorry, sorry. I had said ba, isn't it came to me? And then I was like, Badu. It, it came out Babadu, but I, I do know his name. <laughs> You're going to um, tell me, no, Nunez is going to tell me something. I don't know this guy's name. It's, uh, he hit a walk-off, like, it wasn't a walk-off. It was like a go-ahead home run a while ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago. Haas or something it, so for the for the Tigers. He's awesome. a loser. Uh, <laughs> catcher for the Detroit Tigers, Eric Haas, has <laughs> seven home runs in the month of July. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, they were hot. They, they were hot. They were hot. hot. Um, yep. All so right, we so got, we're looking for an American League outfielder and a Dodger. An American League central outfielder. Okay. A Dodger and an American League third baseman. Oh, Eric Lee, Lee. third base. <sighs> Guest Olsen, is Chapman hot? Matt Chapman? Chapman is not hot. The other Matt is not hot. <laughs> this, is why, this is why I wanted both Matts in the draft. We remember this? I got Chapman. I got the stinky Matt. This you year. got the bad Matt. <laughs> yeah, I wanted both Matts. Um. <laughs> uh... Um, dude, what? The American League Central outfielder, by the way, has hit all seven of his home runs in the last 11 games. Jesus Christ, this guy is the hottest player in baseball. Yeah, what am I missing here? Really is the hottest player in baseball, and I'm missing something. two last night to bring him to seven on the month. Oh, Jorge Soler. Jorge Soler is correct. You want to hear a fun fact about Jorge Soler? By the way, uh, my my terrible pick for for long shot MVP of the year. Uh, <laughs> not only does he have seven home runs in the last eleven games, but it's important to note uh, the only problem with him being that hot is that he has seven RBI in the last eleven games because nobody in front of him can get uh, on base. So he has seven home runs in the last eleven games, all of them being solo home runs, and he has no other RBI outside of that. Mm. A little fun fact about Jorge Soler. What? Anywho. Uh, is he a Royal? Yes. Okay. American League third baseman, Dodger player. Damn. Dodger player seems disrespectful that we haven't gotten this one yet. There's um, only so many people on the roster. I, I don't even know another player on the roster. Outside of the good ones. And no, it's Cody, not that I would know. Cody Bellinger. I mean, what? Certainly not Cody Bellinger. He has four <laughs> home runs this entire year. Yeah. Who's the guy who is a middle I traded, infielder? I traded Max Muncie for Cody Bellinger like a month and a half ago. <laughs> that fantasy league. That hurt. And it hasn't gone well. So who the hell I'm, do they have in the middle infield, Austin? I mean, I'm I'm just lost. Don't no, they have a we already an Asian said, man? We already said Chris Taylor, Max Muncy, Will Smith, Bellinger. I don't. I, they have an Asian man that plays middle infielder, I believe. Do they? Park or Hong or that's Wong? the Padres, but oh damn it, that's Ha Young Kim for the Padres. Yes, that's who I'm thinking about. So. I, I'm like uh, the guy who doesn't even play every night, AJ Pollock. AJ Pollock has seven home runs in the month of July. Dude, like, dude does not have seven home runs. He I want to see the hands. He got hot. I would just uh, need the entire American Dodgers lineup. Baseman. American League third baseman is the only one remaining. And we're going to skip the other two trivia questions because I'd like to talk about something else tonight. Anthony Rendon? No, he, he hasn't up? been in July, I don't think. Jesus. <laughs> Damn, they're playing without him and Trout? Yes. Good Christ. They have been virtually all season. Um, I don't even know who plays third base. How's that? Really? <laughs> I don't know. Um, Single American League third baseman? Anthony Rendon. No. I just guessed him. Who's the All-Star him. game? When we went to the, No, let's think about this. Who got selected in the All-Star game? For third base from American League. Can we even just, like, put out... Because I'm trying to think about that lineup when we went through just third baseman. They just listed names of third baseman. Just give me a name. American League third baseman that was decent. Give me something to jog my memory. You bastard, you. 
<laughs> uh, Rafael Devers. Yes, it's Rafael Devers. Then what are we talking about, kid? He's the best third baseman in all of baseball. <laughs> yeah, that's the only other like American League third baseman I can even name. <laughs> and it took you forever to get that name. Yeah. <laughs> Pete Alonzo, Juan Soto, Rafael Devers. Let's, listen, to Tom, listen to this list. Listen to this list. Mitch Hanniger, AJ Pollock, Jorge Soler, Eric Haas are the it 10 took players. Us 15 minutes. It's half the it's half the home run derby. <laughs> and then Juan Soto or yeah, well, Juan Soto's in it. Jesus. Gun me down. Votto just hit a home run, by the way. 4-2 red legs. Let's go. Start you might be people. up to 7 in July now with that, actually. Yeah. Been quite hot. Anyways, oh, uh, update on the standings, by the way. With Austin's performance tonight, he's officially passed Josh in the points. Jesus. Just pathetic. <laughs> Mark got a more of a got, lead. Josh got a total <laughs> of, of two points, which is the same amount of points that Mark got tonight. Yeah. <laughs> is that a good news? Oh, what do you want me to say? On the show. Sometimes uh, you just don't have it. Didn't have it. Austin got up to 103 points. Josh is at 102, and Mark is at 153 now that he got two points tonight. So, wow. Yeah. I apologize to my fans out there. <laughs> yeah. It didn't go very well for you. Anyways, uh, we'll move forward here. You guys see the trailer? We finally got a release date for the new Bond movie, by the way. Uh, Is that it's the trailer you're trailer. talking about? Yeah, um, I just came up yeah. on it. Yeah, I saw it in theaters for what movie? Black Widow. They gave one. Okay, cool. Was that was that good? I, at this point, I, I'm just going to talk about movies. <sighs> to be honest with you, uh, not no, I got like the five. So, so yeah, I got like five. But the honestly, I went in with such low expectations. I didn't want to see the movie in general. So uh-huh. I was like, I mean, it was it much overperformed. I think some people give it too much crap. Uh, it was a little, it was like a little rushed at certain points because apparently, like, it came out that they wanted to do a series for it, but then they felt like it'd be like almost like a disservice to the character because she's like the main female character that people actually like in Marvel. Other than like Captain Marvel is obviously more powerful or whatever, but the right, fans but no, don't actually sure. like her. Yeah, so they were like, we want to like take more time on it, but like felt like it'd be bad. So like it felt kind of rushed at points, but like. It's pretty funny. A lot of comedy. David Arbor's character is hilarious. Um, Harbor, is it a soft H? Hard H? I think it's David Harbor with a hard H. Okay. He, uh, his character is actually <laughs> fucking hilarious with a hard H. This is very <laughs> funny. Um, he plays like a, so you're going to see it at some point. I'm not going to spoil it too much, obviously, but like he plays yeah. like the Russian version of Captain America, basically. <laughs> And, like, he's just, like, he talks to her. At one point, there's a scene where he's, like, so, uh, did he ever talk about me? And he, she was, like, what are you talking about? He's, like, you know, Cap, did he ever say anything about me? And she's, like, what are you talking about? No. Like, you know, he's, like, goth. Fa, ha. He's got to. It was, it was very funny. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. I liked it. Surprisingly, I liked it. Cool. I watched it. I, I'm not really... Uh, rushing out to see it myself but sure glad people like it yeah. <clears throat> anyhow uh josh you gotta head out or yeah i'm I'll probably dip out here so appreciate you enjoy guys yeah. i'll see you later bum. <clears throat> yes bum me yeah, sorry oh screenshot your fan duel lineup and send it to us oh sh- I'll, I'll run through it real quick i got five minutes yeah, i'll run yeah, through yeah. It real quick. all right so we're gonna do a fan duel lineup for the olympics this weekend uh, for golf, and Josh is going to go through his right now. Austin and I will do mine at the end of the show. All right, so this is a very unlike me lineup this week. I kind of looked, I just did some research on who people think, because the field isn't that big, or no. as big as a normal tournament, and uh, there's not as many heroes for me to take, and anyone that I'd actually know and like to win is worth too much money. So I did kind I'll of an insider's thing. Rob got COVID. <laughs> yes. Um, so first off, we'll start at the bottom here. Actually, no, let's start right at the top. This is highlighted by the please don't make me do military service lineup. Okay, so my first pick here, I got Sung J M. Oh <laughs> I got Sung J M was my first golfer selected. He's the top Korean on tour. He's got the best odds of any Korean to win the thing. And he, he's playing some decent golf. He's only missed five cuts all year. I like Sung J M this weekend for his own sake. Second up, I got Siwoo Kim. I got 
<laughs> Kate uh, he does have a back injury, but again, he he's gonna have to play. He he wants to play, obviously. <laughs> um, uh, good luck to him this weekend. Third pick, not a Korean, <laughs> Deki Matsuyama. Uh, he also is ill, <laughs> but he'll be in the field and he'll be playing. Um, and then we went to some other guys who were cheap, and I couldn't find the other Koreans because they actually don't even have their pictures in them as much on FanDuel. Uh, so then I went with um, Carlos Ortiz was the cheapest option, who was actually like top 20 odds to win the thing. Um, a popular pick on the show, Joaquin Neiman, of course, and the bastard that stunted me out of a big shot last weekend in gambling at the Open or two weekends ago, Paul Casey, who was the highest Brit, I believe, in the Open. Uh, he oh, has you're, some very high You're the one that got stung. I got Louied. My guy you let did, me down. I meant an actual bet that I made separately where I bet that Daniel or what loser that I bet some loser to be the highest Brit in the tournament. It was an absolute debacle and probably the start of the end of my betting career, which I'll have to talk about more with Mark next week or something. Yeah. I mean, you've said that a couple of times. No, I, I actually, I texted the bookie. I have no account. I have no means of sports betting. It's over. Until yeah. it gets legalized in, in New York and you can use FanDuel Sportsbook and then it'll just be too easy. You know, then I'm back. Yes. Yeah. Uh, until that moment, though, yeah. So I got a peace out, guys. Appreciate it. Go, go, South Koreans. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> go, South Koreans. What the hell Respect. was that? Uh, uh, Austin, do you have any South Koreans in your lineup? Uh, I wouldn't really know who's South Korean and who isn't. Um, I do have Siwoo Kim. Is he South Korean? Yes, I think so. What about Sung J M? Is he Korean? He is South Korean. Yes. I have both of them. I have Sung Jim as well. Um, I also have Hideki Matsuyama. Definitely not Korean. No. Um, no. You're, you're going to notice a trend for my lineup, you know. Well, we'll just go through them right now. So, for <laughs> mine at least, uh, starting at the bottom, I got Mito Pedeta. I don't know what country he's from. He's 7,800. He seems to be a rookie on the tour um, this year. I don't know. And then I got the guy that I went with last week, Guido Migliazzi, uh, the most Italian Italian who's ever Italian before, um, also kind of cheap. Uh, and then I went uh, – this is actually kind of just a repeat of my open lineup, to be honest with you. Um, I went with Cameron the Mullet Smith. Um, still got the mullet, still named Cameron Smith. Uh, and then I had Sung J.M. and Hideki Matsuyama, who we just touched on, and then – a guy who uh, I pick seemingly every time if Louis Usazen isn't in the field, and that's uh, the jacked the jacked guy, Roy McIlroy. He's got big muscles. He has huge muscus muscles. I want yes. him to win. Who you got in your lineup, Austin? My lineup, you know, it's it's a pretty dominant lineup. You know, it's it's got a common theme with maybe a little bit of an off theme at the end. Uh, we'll get to that though. Top two guys, uh, Morikawa and Matsuyama course they're gonna dominate everybody mm-hmm. knows it then of course i mentioned two other guys i have siwoo kim and sung jm you're noticing a theme here Did you go with no i'll, I'll wait <laughs> so you're, you're and last then my my fifth guy here is gonna be raikuya hoshino uh the <laughs> 7900 he's only he's only played in four uh tour events this year <laughs> But I really like him coming out here. I don't know why. I just you know, I just like I just like him. And then my last guy, the dark horse, the guy who I don't think he could read a room, Mark Leishman. <laughs> Mark Leishman. <laughs> is that that's gonna be the that, top six going into Sunday night, and Mark Leishman's not gonna read the room and he's gonna win it. Did you are you um is this the bit off of that uh, that one TikTok sound from from Last Chance You? I think it was, where the guy's like, "Y'all are freaking African Americans," and Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I, I have uh, you know a couple Japanese guys, a couple Koreans, and Mark Leishman. And and Mark. All right. <laughs> I hope that works out. I thought what I thought you were gonna do was go with the Asian sensation lineup. Um, which is a patent that's only been used a handful of times in the history of the show. But I was thinking about it, but then I couldn't decide between CT Pan, who I haven't determined what 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 where he's from, uh-huh. and then Jazz Jane Wadatanand. 
What? His name is Jazz Jane Watt Ananand. Give me one second. I'm going to look that up for you. CC Pan is Taiwanese. Um, Perfect. Spell that last name for me. J A N E W A T T A N A N O N D. Wow. Uh, that's a name. Uh, and he is <laughs> from Thailand. Okay. <laughs> that's what the internet Yeah, that, I couldn't decide between those two, so I just paid up for Mark Leishman. And he also does not play. I mean, this is the thing with the Olympics. There's a lot of guys I've never heard of uh, because he only plays on the Asian and European tours. Yep. Our our um, our Thai buddy there, um, whose if name that I, guy. If that guy wins, dude, I mean that's. Imagine Mike Tarico having to say that name over and over and over again during their, during NBC's coverage. This guy finished tied for 14th in the 2019 PGA Championship. Oh, snap. So he used to be on the tour. Wait, that's incredible. I've never heard of this guy in my life. And he finished top 20 in a, a major? Oh, good for him. All right. Up and well, coming. A couple things going on this week. Uh, NBA draft is on Thursday. Um, I don't really know how much, hey. how much I have to say. I'd rather just react to that, unless you have something in particular involving uh, your fervent Pistons fandom. No, I, actually, usually uh, every draft, whatever my team is going, and I usually have some hard decision where I'm like, they have to do this or I'm going to be sad. I really don't care. I think uh, I, I trust the org. I trust yeah. it. Isaiah Stewart and, and you know, Sadiq Bay and, and all the young talent that they've drafted makes me believe that they know what they're doing. I don't care. They have I'll a new regime. Maybe knows what it's doing. I'll let it ride. Yeah. You, you, are, you, are you a Cade Cunningham guy or do you prefer Evan Mobley? Because I, I, over the last couple of days, there's been some serious talk uh, in terms of scouts starting to think that Evan Mobley might be the better player. Yeah, I mean, I like Evan Mobley, but like. You I went also, to USC, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I also just see the upside with Cade Cunningham of like, obviously a guy who could just score 30 at night at one point in his career. So, like, that uh, that kind of upside can't be matched. And I could see Evan Mobley being, you know, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Mo Bamba. This guy who could have been and then just, just can't seem to put together. Which happens a lot more than you'd think in the NBA, which is why I kind of get annoyed talking about prospects and, like, yep. young players and whatnot. <laughs> because uh, time is a flat circle, you know? We're just going to keep revolving around the same arguments that we've been having for the last 15 years. Did you see earlier today on Sports Center, Jay Billis said that Cade Cunningham is the most complete prospect he's ever seen going into the draft? Oh, my God. Which is, you know, interesting considering um, <laughs> Luka Doncic was drafted three years ago and Zion was drafted two years ago. And, uh, you know. Uh, it's just crazy. Every draft cycle, we do this crap where, like, every player in the top 20 is just going to be a superstar. And it's so crazy to me. I'm like, uh, you realize, like, one or two guys from every class is even, like, a quality player at the end of his career. Like, Hall of Fame potential. Yeah. Well, the like, problem is, is I think the last few years or so, probably even the last four or five years, we've been spoiled with some really good draft classes. Yeah. Um, and I, I at least... As myself, right? I'm a pleb. I don't really evaluate talent. I don't really ever claim to. It seems to me that this year is kind of a a uh, bit of a come down year from that. I'll call it. Yeah. You know, like I, I don't see much of any of the. But this reminds me of. I was about to say the Trey Young year, but then I realized that DeAndre and and um, Luca were in that draft. So yeah. never mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that that year was good too. I, yeah. That's true. A lot of years have been pretty deep. Like, I mean, I guess the year with like Tatum was just Tatum. I mean, Lon- Lonzo and and Marco Fultz for the most part, not one twos. Let me. I'll pull up the draft real quick. What year was that? Twenty seventeen. Yeah, twenty seventeen. Let me see here. De'Aaron Fox was in that draft. Ah, there we go. 
Uh, Donovan Mitchell. Well, okay, so this is he. This is I'm this is out of bio, Donovan Mitchell back to draft, back. Right. Here's who was drafted in this draft that that I would reckon is actually has been a really good pick for those teams. Jason Tatum at three, De'Aaron Fox at five. Uh, Jonathan Isaac was finally coming around until he tore his ACL. Uh, yep. Let's see here. Donovan Mitchell at 13. Uh, Bam Adebayo at 14. Um, John Collins at 19. The slide of the draft, Jared Allen at 22. Jared Allen at 22. <laughs> Oki Ananubi at 23. Kuzma to and, an extent at 27. And, and this is kind of the point of, like, why these players get way too much, like, expectations thrown on them at the yeah. pick number four and just crap. Like, you keep going down Thomas Bryant at 42, Dylan yeah. Brooks at 45. Yeah. Look at these guys. Yeah. So I think, and again, maybe maybe hindsight will prove me wrong, and I, I've never really, like I said, never masqueraded as a good evaluator of talent. It doesn't seem to me, at least, that this year's draft has quite that feel to it. You know, because I remember that draft being marketed as pretty pretty damn deep um but yeah i don't, I don't know uh we'll see what happens i guess have you seen uh, i wonder the big question i guess is what the warriors are going to do because they seem to be interested in trading everything for everything right now uh That's whether fun. it be both of their first round picks for a star player which will honestly give me a headache or uh both of their first round picks and everything else on the team for bradley beal um <sighs> Uh, I just don't even want to think about a team shooting <laughs> like Bradley Beal, Clay <laughs> Thompson, or Steph Curry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just sounds so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Warriors, the Warriors might actually be the most interesting story going into the draft. Um, in the terms of, I assume that they're going to be going in on some sort of a championship run this year, adding players, um, that kind of stuff. I assume that. I, I guess I don't know. They don't really seem like the kind of team that's willing to wait around for stuff to come I'll to them. That too. I mean, so. Also, like, how long do you think Curry could play at the level he just played at? Like, most people that are 32, 33 don't do that. Like, yeah. Or I saw, much longer. I saw a tweet this morning that was like, Steph Curry really scored 40 a game for an entire month, and we really walked it off like it was nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, other than that, free agency starts this Friday. I guess we can talk about, uh, in that frame, uh, our first big deal of draft week from yesterday. And I didn't actually get to talk to you guys about it. I talked to a couple other people about it. Uh, where the, the Grizzlies traded away Jonas Valanciunas. Um what were the whole the, it was Jonas Valanciunas and pick number ten in the draft for Stephen Adams, Eric Bledsoe, pick seventeen, and a and a first rounder next year. Yeah, that sounds right. Something like that. I don't remember. Uh, I question it on the Grizzlies side. I really, I really. Was, do. I was just gonna say the same thing. <laughs> Um, but on the converse, I like it a lot for the Pelicans, actually. Um, it, it, they don't really take that much of a slide in terms of draft position. Uh, they get a notable upgrade at center um, and a notable upgrade who's being paid quite a bit less than Steven Adams <laughs> is currently. And... Uh, and get shedding Eric Bledsoe's contract, which if I, I again I gotta look this up now because we were talking about it last night. I can't remember it being cheap. Uh, um, let me see, Eric Bledsoe contract. Yeah, it's a uh, seventeen and a half million dollars a year, uh, and it ha- he has he has two more years left on that contract, so it's two years. Just about $35 million left for Eric Bledsoe, who, as Josh pointed out to us, us last night, statistically was the worst starter in the NBA last season. <laughs> um, so, yeah, good up for a shedding contract. <laughs> I just think that was a really good trade overall. I don't know. like I mean, like we were just talking about, moving from 10 to 17, I really don't care. 
that much. Like, well, and it's within the context of this draft class, which we, I, I guess, we both agree yeah. isn't quite as good as years past, right? Like, yeah. I don't know. If, and, if and it's how, it, I guess you like your you you maybe like your ability to find a, a similar player at seventeen that you might have even been trying to reach for at ten. Yeah. You know? Um, but I think the more important story out of this is it gives them more leeway in terms of free agent market. Uh, and it seems to be uh, the biggest story that I've seen that's getting traction out of today is that they might be the front runners for Kyle Lowry. Um, I like that. Which I like quite a bit. Yeah, like quite a bit. Is uh, Brandon so, Ingram going to stay? I've seen stuff about Brandon Ingram leaving. They have to sign, they have to resign him. I don't know. It's it, His fifth year just ended, so I figured it was... I assume they're going to do everything in their power to re-sign him. Um, no, he just signed an extension last offseason. Did he really? Uh, yeah, max contract extension. Just under $32 million a year. Oh, oh yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay. They got that locked up. So I, I wonder, I guess I guess with all the Kyle Lowry rumors, I guess it sets in motion what's next for Lonzo Ball if they don't decide to keep him. I, I find it hard to imagine that they sign both of them. Um, so I guess that opens up that question moving forward. Maybe, I don't know, I haven't even really thought about teams that Lonzo Ball could go to. I haven't even really uh, considered that until just now. So we'll have to pontificate on that and see where that goes. But um, also the MLB trade deadline is this upcoming weekend. I want to talk about a couple of the big players that seem to be on the move. Um, unsurprisingly, Everyone is in on Trevor Story, and I'm not 100% sure the Rockies are going to be smart enough to trade him. Um, it's <laughs> Pirates ridic- fire sale. It's ridiculous to me, actually, with the whole Rockies thing, because like they, they have no reason not to trade him. It's either trade him this week, Trevor Story, that is, trade him this week, or finish the season and get nothing. Literally nothing. Because I'd put it at like a... 10% chance that Trevor Story re-signs with the Rockies this offseason. So, like, look, he may still be at Coors Field come Sunday or whatever. Um, I think it'd be a bad idea by the organization to do that, but who knows, right? Normal teams, uh, uh, the A's, the White Sox, the Yankees, all, uh, every team could be interested in, Tre- in Trevor Story. Um, another player that everyone is interested in is Max Scherzer, who yeah. whose trade whose trade uh, market has really uh, skyrocketed over the last three four days or so. I feel like going into last week before he got scratched from the start on Saturday, I wasn't really hearing much of anything in regards to trade rumors surrounding Max Scherzer. Um, but apparently, the Nats have made it apparent that um, everyone but Juan Soto is available. Hmm. Which you know, interesting given the season that Trey Turner's having, but you know. Yeah, uh, I saw a lot of Trey Turner rumors as well. That's interesting. It's weird, isn't it? Like I'm looking at it right now. He's not old. He's 28. He's having the best season of his career right now. He's batting 320 with 18 home runs and 21 steals right now. Just coming out of the All Star break. Yeah, I I don't really understand i guess uh that whole thing but hey if you want to trade him freaking go for it i bet you can get a haul for him um uh i again i don't really know how much i can actually elaborate on this scherzer thing because all i've heard is like yeah teams are interested a lot of them and and my response is like yeah of course a lot of teams are interested the place for him to go that would be cool is the blue jays right that's like the that clearly yeah. need another starter, and that lineup's already insane, and it would just make that division the most insane division to exist. If the Blue Jays could swing that, I don't know if they can. If they could, they might have to like throw Nate Pearson in a deal to, to be able to swing that. Um, but shit, I'd like to see it. <laughs> it would be a lot of fun to, to have Max Scherzer. Did you see... Let's talk. We haven't been able to talk about this whole Adam Frazier thing. You see that the, uh, according to friend of the show, Jeff Passan, the Padres are going to continue to be sellers 
or buyers going into the deadline. Love to hear that. Specifically, they want to add more starting pitching. That's ridiculous. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, Blake Snell has been atrocious this year. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, you know, and Denilson Lamette surely isn't giving healthy minutes anytime soon. That's fair. Uh, so, I mean, I guess I get it, but like, geez, how, 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 how much do you have left of the farm to sell? Yeah. I, <laughs> I heard uh, they might ship uh, Hosmer off. Yeah, Hosmer seems to be the big one, especially now that they brought um, uh, Frazier in because they can, yeah. they can move uh, Jake Cronenworth over to first base and be fine with it, you know? Yep. Jake Cronenworth yep. and Toss Young Kim and Will Myers can all play first base. So, um, you know. I, I think they could somehow sell off Hosmer to a contender at this point and probably get a decent haul. Yeah, maybe. Um other big one to me at least is Anthony Rizzo, who yep. somehow now seems to be the most likely cub to be dealt other than Craig Kimbrell. Um given which is strange given all of the Chris Bryant talks of the last year. But you know, uh, apparently the big link here is going to be between uh, what people have been saying is between Anthony Rizzo and the Red Sox, uh, which honestly is as bad as Anthony Rizzo has been this year. I do tend to think that um, a change of scenery could probably help. Um, mm-hmm. Being in the playing for the Cubs right now is not really doing him any favors. Um, not dissimilar to the Nick Castellanos thing from a few years ago when he got traded away from Detroit, you know? Ooh. Um, and it, it fits perfectly, right? The Red Sox don't really have a first baseman. They need a lefty bat. You know, it, it, Anthony Rizzo could come in and bat second for them and slot in perfectly fine, you know? You all, you know who also needs a lefty bat? The Yankees. <laughs> the Yankees. The Yankees. <laughs> and they're certain they are seemingly not getting Luke Voigt back ever, so they also have an opening at first base. I don't know yeah. what the hell the Yankees are doing. I don't want to talk about it. It's just that. <laughs> right? I don't know if they're selling. I don't know if they're just going to ride it out. I don't know. It seems like they're just going to ride it out. They traded for Clay Holmes. All right. Not really much. <laughs> <flashback. Okay? laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's so confusing. They're going to ride it out and still not fire Boone this offseason and then just ride it out again next year. This is what they're going to do. And then they're not going to pay Aaron Judge. He's going to want out. And... Let it be known, Hot Stove fans, my my World Series pick, the Yankees. <laughs> I don't even remember who my pick was. Honest with you. It might have been Absolutely the, brutal. might have been the Twins, honestly, which has that's, gone even, even worse. That's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, no, mine probably was Yankees-Dodgers. I don't see it. No, it was it was either Yankees Dodgers or White Sox Dodgers. Yeah, Severino coming back was was a big part of my prediction. <laughs> yeah, and it was the big part. Uh, it was the big part of the Yankees not making any other moves. They like had this like supposed ace in the hole of Luis Severino came back and it, coming back, and it blew up in their face. Yep. Just like every other move in the last decade. Just like- plus. Any other baseball team, depending on a guy coming back from an injury. Yeah. It just doesn't – it's just not how baseball works, man. At the Nationals it's, with Steven Strasburg. Especially with pitchers, dude. They just, will seemingly you know. never be healthy again. <laughs> yeah. Now, I saw a report the other day that, like, they were going for another opinion on his neck, and I was like, okay, time to drop him. I haven't been one fantasy league. Yeah. And then I saw the report this morning that he's having neck surgery, and they hope he'll be ready for next season. So – crazy it's a tough scene um <laughs> it's it. i don't think i actually had anything else to talk about you got any other big things coming into the draft free agency in the nba and or mlb trade deadline any of that stuff uh i had one thing on the olympics and i can only oh, say yeah. it because josh isn't here we went an hour and five minutes and didn't talk about the olympics not one time one thing on the Olympics, you know, just because Josh isn't here, and even Mark, I don't know, maybe both of them would be would be on the other other side of this. So I'm glad they're not here. Simone Biles, 
uh, withdrew from the uh, team, whatever, gymnastics thing, and they finished silver. I just want to yes. say, why the fuck are people so at this basically child, 24-year-old, because for doing the right they- thing? Because old, old people don't understand, uh, old, old boomer people don't understand mental health, the basically. Of people I have seen call her a quitter and a loser, I, they should all be gunned down, and I, I know Josh would be one of them. I know Josh would have called her a Mark loser. Mark isn't, he tweeted about it, um, so I saw that. He seems to be on the hashtag right side of history in this situation. But I, 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 mean, I the thing that's annoyed me the most, actually, is... Um, the fact that it's such a clear double standard when it comes to specifically women of color in sport, um, you know, nobody, nobody was crying foul. I'm sure they were, but hear me out. Nobody was dying when Andrew Luck retired, right? Nobody. No, it was a. Well, I, for, I saw somebody tweet it. I wish I found it. It was like Jordan retired twice. Uh, Barry Sanders retired early. Uh, Calvin Johnson retired early. Andrew Luck retired early. Sometimes you just get fucking tired, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I mean, in in double in this case, I even said it to my mom today. I was like, "This isn't like LeBron. Like people were trying to compare it to LeBron retiring in the fourth quarter. It's not okay. at all." What Here's the thing: when LeBron's on the court, he's always going to be better than me on the court. But like, if Simone Biles is mentally out of it and slips off the beam. Her team's going to lose. So if she doesn't feel mentally ready to go perform, she can get hurt and she can get a dis- awful score because she did something wrong because she wasn't mentally in it. It's not yeah. like she's just better than everybody, even when she's mentally out of it. I, I, don't, yeah, no, I don't get the it. The cross comparisons are ridiculous. Like I said, it's, a, it's an annoying thing. Like LeBron James in Game 7 of the NBA Finals. Tap it out. It's also not because, like, <laughs> this is one of them. He hasn't said she's not competing in the rest of the Olympics. It was, it was literally just one event that she felt as though that she it would be better for the team <laughs> if she didn't compete. Just she was like, and, she, and we got silver. So of course, like, instead of going, "Wow, congratulations to you know the sub who had to come in and the rest of the girls for getting silver after you know their best performer just." withdrew it's like only silver dude these people suck <laughs> i'm like yeah it's it was shit. it's also <laughs> annoying to take away from the fact that i don't remember her name now i feel stupid uh the japanese american girl that's for the place for the american or does it goes for the american team um whose name i cannot remember um what the hell is her name uh, whoever it is, whose name I cannot remember, I'm looking through Twitter right now to find it, is an absolute star. Uh, I remember reading an ESPN article going into um, into the Olympics, talking about how like this girl, whose name I cannot remember, give me a second. Um, this girl could like challenge Simone Biles on her best days in terms of, like, talent yeah. and whatnot. Suni Lee. That's what it is. Mm. So, yeah. I just had to, I had to make sure I clarified that. Anywho, um, I don't know. I was actually going to ask this when all of us were on, um, if Mark was on, but I, I mean, we'll probably just ask it again next week when we have the four of us. But what's your favorite, like... A quote unquote underground Olympic sport, like one that doesn't get shown on TV that often, uh, that you really like watching. What is it? What have you been paying attention to so far in the Olympics? I don't know. It's tough to say. I mean, there's some easy ones that are like kind of under, but at this point, they're getting more popular, like water polo. But um, so far, I've been watching um, team handball a lot. And just, like, I watched the other day, it was Spain and Norway, I think, were playing. And it was mm-hmm. literally, someone got fouled at the buzzer, basically. And and they had, a, a basically, a penalty shot. It's called a uh, seven-meter throw for the win. Yeah, and, and you just get three seconds for the win. It was tie game. 
seven meter throw at the buzzer and they just get three seconds at the seven meter line, them and the goalie to throw it in. And it's the most, it's just the funniest thing. The guys always just stand up on one leg, like lean over the line and then just give like two huge pump fakes and then just throw it wherever. And I'm like, this is insane. Handball is also my answer. I absolutely love watching it. <laughs> I love it so much. I've been watching a lot of handball. I was watching skateboarding over the weekend. Um, I'm a huge, huge skateboarding fan. So it was, it was really fun to have it in the Olympics for, um, for the first time ever this year. Uh, yeah. Did you see the results of uh, Women's Street on Sunday night uh, where the two uh, girls who took gold and silver were 13 years old? I mean, weren't they both from Japan? Uh, no, the the gold medal went to a 13 year old Japanese girl. Silver went to a 13 year old Brazilian girl, oh, okay. and then uh, bronze so went to great. a 16 year old Japanese girl. That's so yeah. crazy. Yeah, unfortunate though. On Saturday night, Nigel Houston, uh, number one skater in the world, uh, the face of skateboarding, really cool guy from the U.S. Did not he didn't medal? Um, it was unfortunate, but you know. This is what it is. I also like watching. Uh, I'm excited for excited for when weightlifting kicks in in full. Um, specifically, Mike. Mike uh, uh, will know this. Uh, we've been talking a lot about Lasha Tallahassee recently. Strongest man on the planet. Um, in his own, he's Georgian, and in his own, uh, perf- like his normal competition, he's currently going to be the first person, currently attempting to be the first person ever to have have a combined. 500 kilos um, with his uh, snatch and deadlift uh, PRs. Sing. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's, yeah. He'd be the first person in human history to do it, or recorded history, I should say. Um, but also, I saw a clip of him warming up, because he's, he's competing in the Olympics this week. Uh, warming up his snatch uh, earlier this week with 225 kilos. Um, which, for the reference, in poundage is about 498 pounds. Um, you know, fun fact about that number, he was doing this in practice. That is higher than any number that's ever been recorded in competition. Oh. Any weight, I should say. Or at least, I, this is what I read on the internet, and the internet has never steered me wrong. So It's true. Um, but yeah, the, the dude is unreasonably strong. I would be very much so looking forward to when he when he goes out there at some point this week, I've been watching that and I'm excited also for track and field to start next week. Um, But I I tend to, I I was telling, I was talking to someone earlier today about how like, I like watching track and field and I understand that NBC puts it on a lot. I wish they showed more of the field in track and field. I know. know? I I like the field in track and field. Racing is cool. Like foot racing and whatnot, but like, I want to see more javelin. I want to yeah, see shot put stuff or shot put. You well, know? Even like long jump and high jump barely get to the d- d- screen. Yeah. And that stuff's, I mean, that's so cool too. Yeah. And I, I actually, get it. Like sprint, sprinting is one of the glamour sports. I got it. You know? But. Yeah. I actually, oh. my biggest sport so far, my biggest watch is actually three V three women's basketball. I've watched every one of their games. Yeah. I, well, both of our favorite players, Kelsey Plummer on the team. So yeah. Kelsey Plum is on the team, and she, she's she been nuts so far. They just took their first loss yesterday, didn't they? Yeah, that was to Japan, 20-18. to 18. Damn, close one. I haven't actually so, watched the games yet. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to do that. I think when the is... semifinal starts soon. I don't know what day. Yeah, it's got to start soon. They've been going since early last week. When was – um? Uh, when's the USA's next game, uh, men's basketball? Tomorrow morning. Oh, is it? It's actually at 12.40 a.m. tonight. Tonight? Uh, I might watch it then. <laughs> and they're playing against Iran tonight. Um, Iran's not very good, apparently. They, the USA is a 39.5 point favorite. Uh, it's crazy to me that, that these lines keep getting set like this because the USA continues to disappoint. <laughs> yeah, and I, but I, here's the thing. I don't understand that against France. Uh, and I, I guess we'll talk yeah. about the France game right now. Uh, but I, I kind of, I mean, Iran. Well, like, <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Nigeria. You know, <laughs> you know, well, Nigeria had NBA players on their team. Yeah, yeah. Quite a few, actually. Uh, Iran, bro. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, 
but I, I don't know. I think I saw Rob Perez, guy who follows me on Twitter, Rob, uh, Rob Perez, tweeting about um, the game against France the other night. And I think my biggest takeaway from it is a couple couple different things. One, international basketball is getting better, which is great for the sport. Um, you know, I was watching that. I watched Luca put up 50 in Slovenia in Slovenia's <laughs> Olympic debut. You know, unbelievable. The <laughs> Dodgers put up 50. Um, and I think also from a team construction standpoint, if you wanted to get into the X and O's of it, I don't think it was smart for Team USA to come as a small ball team. Um, their only real center being Bam Adebayo. Uh, for a team, in, specifically in an international rule set, uh, going up against a team like France that's very tall and very physical, it's kind of not made. To, their line, The USA's lineup isn't really made for ultimate success. Now, uh, do I think if they played 10 times, the USA wins more times than not? Probably. Um, but, yeah. That's yeah. that's my point on the X's and O's of it, it at least. It's also um, just like how much different the NBA is getting from, you know, FIBA rules, international rules. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it does I, look like a different game. I do like the international rules quite a bit. Um, I do too. I think the NBA should implement at least a couple of them. Um, no, a lot of them. A lot of them focus on. I've seen a couple people refer to it as the international rules are basketball in its purest form, which a little strong, but um, yeah, I, I understand the sentiment in regards to how the international rule set makes it di- more difficult for players to um, uh, draw fouls, basically, uh, mostly in transition. And then um, what, whenever the NBA puts it in probably this off season, what I'll call the James Harden rule which is jumping in to contact um, and then throwing the ball. Like, those things don't happen in international basketball. Um, the goal of the offensive interference rules are different. Once it touches the rim, it's a live yeah, ball. Yeah, you can just right? – yeah. <laughs> that one's so <laughs> crazy. I, like, I think that's a good – like, I, I think that's a, that's a good change to the game of basketball. I don't hate uh, the rule. It's just so funny to watch, like, when you're not yeah. prepared for it and you just see it go up and then someone just grabs the ball and you're like, whoa. I agree with the sentiment behind it. You know, like if I shot it, I should be able to get it. <laughs> you yep. know, uh, I the only rule that I'm kind of iffy on though is the lack, is the absence of defensive three seconds. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I get it, but I, I think that's a rule that was put in place for a reason. It should probably stay around. You know, I don't know, <laughs> but. Regardless, it was it, I, or was it quote unquote surprising that France won? I guess you know, like I guess in terms of especially for most casual viewers, you'd assume the United States will just run through everything. But there's a reason that uh, the dream team and the redeem team have only happened once, right? Like, there's a reason we talk about those teams. If the United States were beating every other country on the planet by fifty every time they played. <laughs> There wouldn't be a reason to talk about the Dream Team or the 2018, you know? <laughs> well, you know, I know how casual fans interpreted that game against uh, France uh, because because I walk upstairs after the game and my dad goes, huh, you see see USA lost to France? I go, yeah, why? He goes, huh, best player in the world, Kevin Durant, 10 points. That guy's the best player in the world. What are we talking about? I was like, oh, okay. I've had enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brian, my stepdad, who coincidentally, coincidentally works with your dad, um, had a similar reaction. He knows nothing about basketball, but had a similar reaction in the base sense of, like, how does the United States lose into France? And 